Hello kids, it's Christy Friesen. Come with me on a magical journey to polymer clay creation. I have been doing polymer clay for a million years. Now I do some other dabbling too, but polymer clay has become my material of choice. And we've put together here at the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Studio, a wonderful series of polymer clay secrets. So I want to take you on a journey and we are now in step number four of our fun. Now, if you haven't looked at one through three yet, do that. It'll be wonderful. You'll be right up to speed, but you really can take these in any order. My goal is to just have you jump in and make something. We can learn all about polymer clay, but not here. There are other videos for that. You can catch up on polymer clay conditioning and the tools you would use and how to bake things. That's all in the Fire Mountain Gems video collections. But for now, we are going to jump right in. We're going to make. Are you ready? Okay, each one of these secret little tricks has something new for you to experience with polymer clay. And on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce mica powders. What, what? Mica powders? Those are the shiny things and who does not like shine? So we are going to create something in an Art Nouveau style. That's that very flourishy vines, uh, little green growing things. That was such a hit with that particular style of art. We're going to do a super simple version. So you can practically do this with your eyes closed. We're going to do a simple, easy version with that flowing vineriness. And then we're going to use mica powders to make it look metallic. Polymer clay is so easy to work with, but it also is fantastic to mimic other things. So in this case, we're going to mimic metal. Are you with me? Great. All right. So these are a couple of samples here of ones that I've done already. We're going to make the exact same thing. You'll notice that this one looks more like old metal. I'll be telling you all about that later, so stay tuned. But right now, let's make this. Now, what I'm using for this is a kind of a bronze colored clay. But because we're putting mica powders, and I'll tell you all about those, don't worry. Um, because we're putting that on top, it really kind of doesn't matter what kind of clay or color clay you use. It's going to look metallic when we're done. But I'm using sort of a bronze, and I just open up my package, cut out a little piece of it, warm it up in my hands, get it soft and flexible, and then I can either use a roller or an old wine bottle or a pasta machine, which is what we generally use, to roll this thing out into a flat slab. It's not very thick. It's about the thickest setting of my pasta machine, which is about as thick as like a quarter coin. So what I want to do from this is cut out this wonderful little rectangular shape. Now, if you are one of those people that actually like straight edges, you are welcome to use a tool uh, like a cutter that can cut it directly into that shape. However, a little word of caution about that. The problem with perfection is as soon as the tiniest little bit of imperfection intrudes, as it inevitably does, the whole thing looks wrong. So if you start off with imperfection perfectly balanced, then you always look fantastic, which is what I'm going to do. So I am going to wing it. We're just going to cut a rectangle shape out, and we're going to tweak it a little bit so that it's obviously not perfect, but that will just enhance the design. So I find that comfortable. If that makes you itchy, I understand you are allowed to be whoever you are, and if straight lines are something you need, then you make it as perfect as you can. Okay, so now I'm going to take my blade, and I'm just going to cut and discard the part I don't want. And I want this earring and I'm making an earring out of this, but it obviously can become a pendant too if you prefer. I'm going to make a little slice on there that is about as wide as I feel like my earring should be. And I'll go ahead and say, hmm, I think about that long too. Now this is kind of a big earring. This is for like coming in and going, hey, hey look at me. One of those kind of earrings. So that's the size I've got. If you're more like, I'll be over here if you need me, then make it smaller. All right, so we've got this. I want to make another one for this to set on top of, but I don't have to do that yet. I can do all the fancy bits first and then cut it as I go. But just know we're going to save this for that very thing. All right, so now I've got my fun little bit of background piece. I've got a few of those little scrumbles that we've talked about before on the edge. So I'm just going to take my cutting blade and make sure it looks all clean and neat. Now I go back to my wad of clay. I've got some extra here, but you've also got scraps, so 
whatever's handy. And I am just going to make the little vine. But I think this size of a ball right here will make a perfect sized vine. So let's take this, roll it in the palm of your hand with your fingertips until you have a two-tailed snake thusly, which makes a fantastic vine. And I'm going to just make sure that it can go from the corner, curved around, and aim towards the top. So you see how that is? How simple is that? Pressing it down with polymer clay. All you've got to do is push the two pieces together and they stick. Now if you just put it really gingerly and like, ah, barely touch it, that's not going to work. You're going to have to give it a little bit of pressing. There is another thing that we will use from time to time called liquid clay. Liquid clay allows us to make a clay to clay connection a little stronger. We don't really need it for this, but anytime you would want to not push hard to make the connection, little dabs of that clay glue will work. Now I want to make some leaves. So all I want to do is roll out a little ball of clay, same clay, and turn this into a leaf shape. And I do that by just kind of flicking on it, you know, like you flick a booger, that kind of thing. And I'm going to flick at it, and then you're going to make those two ends. Not that you would ever do this, you know, just back when you were a kid is all I'm saying. And you're going to end up with sort of a little rice-shaped bit that you just flatten. And you have a classic leaf shape. The first one's going to go right at the tip of the vine. And if you want it to kind of go outside of the parameters of your earring, I'm totally OK with that. Let's make another. Roll it, do that little boogie flick, pinch those ends, flatten, and let's put the next one just right next to it. So this vine is kind of growing up, and all the leaves are kind of pointing towards the top. Now, I made a few others when you weren't looking so that you don't have to just watch me make a 1,000 little leaves or three or five. And I'm just going to press them into place. And I am pushing them in to making sure, make sure that they're grabbed in there. All right, so now see what we've got? We've got this simple little vine shape. I'm allowing my leaves to come off the side just a little. You don't want it to go so far that it catches into clothing or when you go to hug somebody, your earrings rip out. That's awkward. So don't let it stick out too far. Um, but that should be just enough. Now I think this empty space here could use a little something something. So let's make another snake. Now see, I already did it, so let me roll it back up again so you can see what size that was. I do that often where I will kind of make the shape and then go back and see how big that was in case I need to make more than one of them. So this shape is right about here. It looks like it's just a little bit bigger than all those leaves were. And back into that little two-tailed snake that we like to make. And we're going to do a little curl. Now, as I roll this clay out, it's getting warm. So the heat of my body and the friction of rubbing things makes that clay warm. And when it's warm, it gets soft and pliable, which is necessary because I'm going to make a little curl. And if your clay is too cold, like you've been setting it on a cold tile, you wandered off, had lunch, came back, it might need to be warmed up in your hand or else it won't really bend and curl the way you want to. All right, so now all I'm going to do is just give that a little scooch and look at that beautiful little curl that we've made. All right, so let's get that curl and tuck it right in here. So I'm just tucking it along the edge there and adjusting that curl right up in that area. So I think that turned out pretty nice. What do you think? I like that. All right, so now it needs some details and stuff, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it so that it's sandwiched on its bottom so that we can put that eye hook in there and our eye pin, and I'll tell you all about that, and then we'll come back and do the details. So if I forget the details, just holler, and then I'll come back and do that for sure. All right, so remember that little bit we had left over. We want there to be a little eye pin. You can see that, how it's hanging out right there. That little eye pin at the top allows us to put the earring wire or a jump ring if you're going to make a pendant out of it, that kind of thing. So that's kind of important. But this is pretty thick. So if I just have this thick of a piece, uh, it's going to be kind of a hefty sandwich there. So let me run this back through my pasta machine a little thinner. Pasta machines let you adjust so you can go thinner and thinner. All right, so you see what we have? A little bit more flexible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a straight edge so that we can take our eye pin and rest it where it needs to be. Now the eye pin usually has some length to it. We don't need all of that. So you can just take that end and trim it off, as we've done in some of the other projects, and with a pair of pliers, 
just bend a little hook in the end. I talked about that in some of the other ones, so I won't go into the details, but it's really good to have that hook so things stay put. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that right up so that the eye pin is right on the edge of that cut. Then we're going to take our blade. The blade becomes like the spatula and it lets me kind of scooch in there and pick things up. And now I'm going to take that little guy, come here, gravity, and I'm going to put it right on top there. Boom. Just like that. And press it down just a little so everybody grabs. Now you can make the cut exactly the same, but I figure, like we talked about earlier, if you have a little bit of non-perfection but in a nice balanced way, it's definitely going to look a little bit better. So having a bit more of that bottom showing just makes the whole design a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to trim all of that away. So let's bring this back to the center. Pick it up. Just make sure there's no weird edges. Make sure that's all grabbed. Don't squish anything. But this lets you kind of touch and make each of those edges smooth. All right. So we're ready. I didn't forget. We're ready for some details. For this, you're just going to use a tool. The neat thing about polymer clay is you can use so many tools of just stuff you find around the house. The more you do it, the more you'll find what tools you like. You'll experiment with things. Here at Fire Mountain, you can go to the description in this video and it will give you some links to some more information. There might be tools to see or other materials, so you can check that out. Um, I'm using a number of different tools. I have my favorites like everyone does, but for now, a nice little needle tool will be fantastic because all I'm going to do is come and press some indentations just to make those leaves a little bit more interesting. So see what I've done is I've taken my needle tool and I press it straight down so I'm actually pushing it into the clay, not dragging a line. You can do that, but for this one, the pushing it in looks more better. -er. And I do like to turn my tile around so that I don't have to get myself into these incredible pickles of holding my tools all crazily. So I'm going to just press that there. And I'm doing one press down the center and then one press beside each, uh, beside the center to make a total of three of that. Now you could do more if you like. And you can also get fancy with the background if you wanted to put some texture in there, some dots or something else. Go crazy. It's great. All right, so now we have a, a nice finished everything except for it's boring. Okay, so remember I told you the secret for this one was that we were going to add powders. So we've already had chalk powders and we're going to add that right now, but then we're going to get crazy with our mica powders. So chalk powder is just a little piece of chalk and I had the whole set of inexpensive chalks that you can find at any craft type place and I just pulled out the one that I wanted which is this deep dark brown and I'm just going to use my scratching tool to scratch off a little teeny bit of it and then I'm going to take a brush where's my favorite brush right here and I'm going to take this little brush in the powder and I'm just going to give some depth to interesting places like right around the edges and in between my leaves. Now I put some leaves, some um, powder right up on top of the leaves because I'm going to show you something. It's a really cool trick. You're going to like it. So see how I'm kind of putting that down in there? The mica powder is going to go on top of everything, but we're going to get a little bit of that darkness in there so it has some depth in a couple strategic areas. I would suggest like in between each of the leaves down by the vine would be a great place to put this dark powder. All right. All right, now you see how I put some on that top of the leaf right there? The reason why is I have another magic trick for you, and that is tape. Whenever you have powder somewhere you don't want, a piece of clear tape will take it right on off. You just lay it on the surface, rub it a little, lift it off, and it will pull away the powder. So now I've got powder down in the little cracks and crevices, which looks fantastic but I don't have it on the surface, which is where my shiny stuff is going to go. And if I get a little over exuberant and I get some powders um, places that I do not want, that tape will take it away. Okay, so now let's get started on putting shininess around. This is mica powder, and what mica powder is, is a very shiny way of adding color and shimmer. It's almost as though you got to wander around like a little fairy and pay, make everything golden or bronze, or copper, or blue, or whatever your powder is. There's a number of powders, and they're all fabulous. You can, whoa, you can open it and dump it straight on, which is not the recommended way, 
or you can just use your finger or a brush. And I'm going to use my finger and a brush. So right now, gravity allowed for some extra, which is fine. We were going to put it there anyway. So let's get our brush now and take that extra and start putting it over the whole thing. I'm going to dip into my powder and put a little in the, there's just the lid. That's an easy way of keeping it under control. Um, and a lot of times, you know, if you're going out for the day and you want to just put a little in with your foundation and stuff, that looks really good too. You know, more than one use. And I'm going to come and brush all over. I'm staying away from where I put that dark um, brown and a uh, dark brown uh, pastel powder because I want that to kind of be visible. So I'm not doing like a complete coverage where it's every square inch is just now the golden powder because I want the idea of sort of that that metal look and you know how metal kind of has some nuance to it. It's not just all solid. So what do you think about that? I think that's looking pretty good. Now be careful with your excess. I usually try to brush it out of the way and then maybe use a wet wipe or something instead of blowing it all over the place. You don't need that powder in your air that you get into your lungs. So be careful of that. Um, you know, like anything else, you wouldn't do that when you're baking a pie or anything else when you got powders in the air if you can help it. All right, so now what have we got? We have got a fantastic little guy. I'm going to lift this guy up. I would not put powders on the bottom, uh, like the backside, unless you just really, really love it. But I think it looks really good, as do my fingers, which are also the same color. And this is a nice way to kind of look it all over, see if you missed anything, see if you wanted to take any powder off of it. And I'm liking it. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. So. Obviously, if these are earrings now, you're going to make another one. So you have two earrings. You don't have to make them exactly the same. And because it's a match set, you might want to consider making it its opposite. So this one curves like this. The other one can curve the other way. So you're not wearing two that are curved the same way. Just a thought. Okay, so now this just needs to get baked. Polymer clay is an oven curing clay. It's written on the package. All of your packaging will have instructions, what temperature, what time. And as I mentioned, we have plenty of videos here at Fire Mountain that can tell you all that stuff too. All right, so now it's said and done. How to get it shiny um, in a glazy kind of way so that it's not just rubbing off on all your clothing when you're wearing it. That's where we want to go to uh, a nice, let's see, where are we? Right here, a nice satin glaze. So once your piece is done and baked, it's really good to put a little glaze on it. Now, I've gone over that in some of the other secret videos, so I'm not going to show you that again, so I'll have time to tell you another little trick. But if you're not sure on how to put a glaze or what glaze to use, just go check one or two or three that we do use this in. But then that will make this whole surface protected and keep the shine on it exactly as you intended. Okay, so what's that other secret trick I was telling you about? That is Swelligant. Swelligant is another product, and that's what this one looks like. Swelligant is uh, a series of several metal coatings. So it's just like an acrylic paint, but instead of it being a normal acrylic paint, it has pulverized metal in it. So you can literally paint your baked polymer clay with metal, use a patina, and actually get an aged piece. So this one has bronze and brass on it. It's got a patina, a verdigris. All of that is a natural metal thing. That's a whole process that in itself is a, an addiction. You are going to love it. And I have several videos on how to use Swelligant in the Fire Mountain catalog. So you're going to want to take a look at those videos, all that teaching, find those Swelligant ones and go a little nuts because as you can see, it's a whole nother interesting look. So this one, Super shiny metal, brand new and spanky clean. This one, aged, been outside, living it up. Groovy? Okay, so that is all you needed to know for yet another secret of polymer clay, how to do sculptural things and make them look like shiny metal. So if you liked this, please hit the like. We love it when we get likes. It makes us feel very satisfied about our life. So please put those likes on there. And if you've got a friend that you want to share this to that also might enjoy this creativity, do it. And don't forget, mash that subscribe button, baby, so you don't miss a thing on our Polymer Clay Secrets Fabulous Journey. I'll see you around for another project.